Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are going to look at angles, rays, lines, and planes. It's a lot to cover, so let's get started. We will be talking about angles, rays, lines, and planes. There's not much um, hidden in here. We're going to do a review of angles we talked about in our previous lesson. We'll add to that, and then we will talk about the vocabulary of rays, lines, and planes. A quick review. Angles. We had three types of angles, and this is gone over a little bit more in detail in the previous lesson, but a right angle is 90 degrees, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees, an obtuse angle is between 90 degrees and one and a straight line. That's an obtuse angle, so it's greater than 90 degrees, less than a straight line. All right. So that's just a quick review. Now let's add a little bit to this. Um, bisecting an angle this angle, as we discussed in the previous video, is called angle R-U-T, rut. <laughs> um, and bisecting it means cutting it in half or cutting it in two. So the ray, U-G, bisects the angle R-U-T. So in other words, this, and we call this a ray when it has um, an end and an arrow, and we'll talk about that a little bit in just a second, but this ray UG from here to here cuts this angle RUG into two. It cuts it into two angles, two acute angles that are RUG and GUT. And to use a piece of vocabulary from the previous lesson, if you were to add up those two angles, you get a 90 degree angle, which means that they are complementary angles. But complementary angles have to be less than 90 degrees, so both of them would be called acute. All right, a little bit um, complicated there with the bisecting, but bisecting an angle basically means that you're cutting the angle in half. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, one more thing about angles is that um, a piece of vocabulary I think I used in the previous video is the vertex is where they meet. And the rays, these are technically rays, not lines, um, here will meet at the point H, U, and A. So we would say that point A is the vertex, point U is the vertex, or point H is the vertex. The vertex of each of these angles is the middle point the point where they both intersect, all right? And that's, um, that's a piece of vocabulary that you'll see often used when talking about angles. Now, let's take those pieces together and talk about what we've sort of already brought up, but that's a ray. A ray is a difficult thing to define because it begins, rays begin at a point and continue in one direction. This is an example of a ray. It's like an arrow. So it starts here at the point G and continues on in that direction. So you'll have that arrowhead on the one end identifying this as a ray. Now to name a ray, we have to put a second point on it, and then we would call this ray GH. So we start at the end of the ray here where it stops, and then our second point is along there. So this is the ray GH. We wouldn't call it the ray HG, we'd call it GH because it starts here and then continues on in that direction. Rays are a little different than lines. Lines continue in both directions. So when we represent a true line, we'll represent it with something that looks like this, that has arrows in both directions. When we name it, we do put two points on it, but the points are not at the end. The points are just somewhere in the line. We could call this line, line GH, or we could call it HG. It doesn't matter, because the line goes in both directions forever. So both directions are, are fine um, for naming lines. Also, a straight line, has a measurement of 180 degrees, or it's a 180 degree angle um, will make up a straight line. So just a couple of pieces of information about straight lines, just again some vocabulary and a bit of a definition to help you understand straight lines. The last thing we're going to talk about in this is a plane. 
A plane, when I think of a plane, I think of a, a sheet of paper. Okay, it goes in two dimensions and it's flat. So this is my version of a, a piece of paper. Just imagine it um, kind of coming out of the screen at you a little bit. And because it's a flat piece of paper, um, I need to have not just one or two points on it, but I would actually need three points to show me that that's the plane I'm talking about. So if I were labeling this, this from G to H would be one line segment, line segment GH. It's just part of a line. It doesn't have the arrows on the end, so we call it a line segment. Line segment GH and line segment GI or IG. Again, you can do them in any order with lines or line segments. We're going to pretend that these are perpendicular to each other, that they're meeting at a 90 degree angle. All right, the angles I have them on there is because it's coming out of the screen at me. So what I would say is that this is the plane IGH or HGI. So I have to label three points on it to say that it is that entire flat surface is the plane that I'm talking about. Kind of like that. It's like hitting four corners of a sheet or three of the four corners of a sheet of paper. And I'm going to draw a second plane on here. This is the plane ABC. So these are two sheets of paper floating in space and they're not touching each other. So I could say that the plane GHI is parallel to the plane ABC. Now that's I would normally label them in the same way. If I'm saying A, B, C, I would say I, G, H. So that's actually an error right there. It should be I, G, H, A, B, C. Just to know that they are parallel to each other. So those planes do not cross each other. Now I'm going to add in some planes that actually do cross. I added in and I had to draw them in so they, they look a little bit funky on the corners. I apologize for that. But now I've created a rectangular prism, right? I've, I've created a box basically, right? And we know that the top and the bottom of the box are parallel to each other. They go in the same direction, they don't meet each other. And that's like a plane. The top and bottom are two planes that we would say are parallel. We also have the sides. This side is parallel to this side, and then the front is parallel to the back. So those are planes that are parallel to each other. Boxes are fun because they help us show several different things. Let's look at another thing we could see. We can say line segment GH or GB, I'm sorry. So the line segment GB, that's the one that goes from here to here. Okay? That's the line segment in the back there GB. It is parallel to the line HC. Right? Those two lines are parallel. They are also parallel to line IA. And this one that I don't, didn't label because I didn't want too many letters on the screen. So GB is parallel to IA. It's also parallel to HC. We could also um, point out some other things. Um, let's look at plane IGH. Right? That's the plane, the blue one up top here, IGH. And that plane intersects with plane GBC. All right, so that's the back of the box. So I'm saying the top of the box, that plane, intersects with the back, and they are what we call perpendicular. They meet at a 90 degree angle, and they meet on the line GH. So the line segment GH is actually the intersection of two planes. When two planes intersect, they intersect to form a line. So that's another Again, kind of complicated thing, but um, I just wanted to point out some of the properties of a plane so that we could look at it and think about it in terms of a box um, um, and pieces of paper and a box and how planes come together. And I hope that wasn't too terribly confusing, but I just wanted to point out some of the things that you can see with a plane. So quick recap. We talked about angles, acute, obtuse, right angles. Um, how to label them, how to bisect them. Rays are like an arrow. Lines are like an arrow that goes in both directions. 
and then our planes are like flat sheets of paper. I hope that this has helped with the vocabulary. I hope it's helped you to kind of visualize these things, and I hope it's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.